Block Pass Episode 3 is sponsored by Black Diamond MX, Premium MX Graphics, and much more. Anderson Motorsport, servicing Audis and tuning them since 1992. One of the oldest and most respected Audi-only shops in the U.S. The guys at Talking Moto Podcast, Scott King, Jason Place, and Jeff Klein provide you an awesome podcast every Monday night live at 7 p.m. Visit TalkingMoto.com for more details. Boatman Home Services, based out of Andover, Minnesota, and servicing the Twin Cities metro area, providing stump and shrub removal from a friendly name you can trust. Hello, this is MX Matt, and you're watching The Block Pass, the semi-regular, often random podcast here. Uh, I've got a co-host today. I want you to introduce yourself. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, what's up, Matt? It's Ryan Gold from GuaranteedMX.com up here in Canada, braving the cold weather and uh, having some fun and, and stoked to be a part of this, man. Always uh, like what you do over there at Hardline MX. Appreciate the uh, the hangout session. Oh, man, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, based, you know, worked with you for quite a while. Uh, you were with a, a d different publication formerly, and I uh, got to know you there. You started off on your own, kind of, you wanted to go with no boss, your own rules, yeah, and yeah. I, I love what you've done with it. It's been been amazing to watch how much you've grown in the past year. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a fun little road. I didn't really think that uh, this is something I would ever get into, even, you know, as a younger kid, I always wanted to just be a racer, and then all of a sudden I got the knack for the internet thing, and I've always liked announcing, and I'm like, you know, once I had the opportunity to go on my own, I'm like, hell, let's just do it, you know. I can take a picture, I can do an interview, I can write, so I'm like, might as well do this on my own. Why do I got to? Why do I got to list anybody else? <laughs> you can you got you can wear all the hats. So what what did your uh, so what's your background for like writing? Uh, not many people. So so Ryan worked with him. He's got me just a lot of connections, a lot of access. Can never thank him enough for that. Uh, got to meet uh, Nikki Betty and uh, Cole Thompson through him. You know, kind of broke the ice with that. So I felt really comfortable talking to those guys. You know, for for me, it's hard to talk to the, like the, the pro riders. I I'm still a C rider technically. <laughs> so I I look up at these guys and go, wow. You know, I'm I'm just in awe what they do. So you get like the starstruck feel from that. So that's kind of been part of the shyness for me getting into the media side. Is I have a hard time walking up and interviewing people that. I just drool watching their ride, you know, riding style and everything. So well, you know what's you know what's funny when you talk to them, they're just as shy as you are. They don't even know what's going on half the time because uh, they're you know these kids are so hard nosed. All they know how to do is ride now. Their personalities are just ride, ride, ride. And then all of a sudden they meet somebody. They're it's, they're nervous. It's like uh, I always compare it to like um, when you. Uh, uh, me as a shark, a shark. You, you. They won't attack you if you don't bug them, kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so when, yeah, when you talk to them, they're just, they're just as nervous as well. But that was, that's funny. You talk like that when I first started getting into it. You just get nervous, and next thing you know, you just kind of roll with it and realize they're just regular guys too. But they're just really fast on a dirt bike, and that's why we think they're cool. Oh, definitely. So, what can you tell us about uh, Guaranteed MX? I, I mean, the site's been up for a while. You know, it's kind of. The big brother Canadian counterpart of what Hardline's trying to do. Uh, yeah. We're kind of focused in the upper Midwest and the U.S. The U.S. I think to me is a little bit too big for us to cover, but we've got people signing on uh, in Texas and uh, out east nice. that are wanting to contribute. So we're pretty excited about that. But yeah, let's let's go into what Guaranteed is. Uh, well, Guaranteed MX is um, basically a site that uh, I started at the end of May. Uh, a friend of mine, Corey Mountain, who's kind of my IT guy behind the site, he. Uh, Started to learn how to do it, learn how to make um, WordPress websites, and uh, it was pretty easy going into it. You know, I, from the background I had with MXP before, you know, doing photo reports and interviews and podcasts and recordings, and it kind of would just fell into it. And uh, when I'm at the races, I just love doing everything and anything. I don't really care what the hell it is, whether I'm out fixing the track, interviewing somebody, taking a picture. Like, and the cool thing is, is like I don't pride myself in doing any of it. Awesome. I just do it. I just do it all very well. So right. uh, I, I just like to get by, and, and the the kind of the goal in mind is to deliver a. Uh, I find that almost everybody that's in media, um, outside of some of the uh, American publications like Jason Thomas, for instance, none of them are real racers. They're just right. guys that love the sport, sort of fans. I've I've done it all. I've uh, I've raced the best, beat the best, won nationals in Canada. I've been racing since I was five, and and uh, so anytime I say something, I. It, it's coming from something that I, I know. It's not just sort of bullshit or, or something that I think I know because I'm, I get to go to the races and, and you know wear cool clothes and maybe get some free stuff. I've actually done it all, and I think that kind of uh, is why I'm gonna have a, I have a really good following now of people because uh, they know I, I'm not just uh, a guy behind the mic. I can actually get on the bike and show them how to do it as well kind of thing, which I, I think is kind of a good respect level where I get from the amateurs and the pros. And uh, it's just something to have fun with. And, I mean, I don't 
I never really liked doing any other job. I've never really been good at anything other right. than talking smack and having fun. And now I get to do it, and I'm doing something I love, and it's putting a few dollars in my pocket, and it's paying the bills. So why not the hell run with it? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's that's exactly it. You know, if, if I could if I could afford to do that, I definitely would. I mean, I definitely like my IT job. I, I enjoy the, my coworkers. I enjoy, for the most part, the company I work for. But at the same time, you know, it's not what I dream about when I go home. I'm out, you know, thinking about the track, thinking about what can I do to my bike to kind of kind of get it a little bit more jacked up, or whatever, and trying to learn riding styles. You know, I'm coming in from the other side as you. I'm learning from the people. I'm learning from people like you. I'm learning from the pro riders. You know, my riding has gotten a lot better since I started photography. I've discovered, you know, the proper form for seat hopping, the proper form for going to a corner at high speed. You know, it's... It's interesting what you can learn from both sides, you know, on the media and, and grow yourself. In your case, it sounds like you grew into learning how to interact with people, learning how to do the web page, you know, configurations and yep. photo reports. I already kind of had that down. I've done media, you know, for automotive for uh, almost a decade now. Oh, wow, okay, now cool. I'm trying to get now I'm trying to get into the the motocross side, you know. I want to get better as a rider. I like I love the sport. I am one of the fans, but I also ride too. I mean, I I stopped racing. I'm technically a vet class racer now, you know. Nice. Definitely enjoy it, but I can't. It's hard for me to mix race day and media at the same time. It, it, you just run out of time too quickly. Oh yeah, and energy. No, so I, uh, I find myself, especially at the national level, because I also do. Um, I work for the CMRC Rockstar Energy Drink Nationals uh, as the on as the in-house announcer or live announcer, and then I run the stage, and then I also do TV as well, and then to try to do and guaranteed on the side. So I'm I'm tweeting and I'm oh. running and I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place kind of thing on national days and then at amateur races I'm doing the same thing I'll go out and race vet class and pro class actually our first race is this weekend at Gopher Dunes which is going to be great because I'm going to run oh, over yeah. my, I'm going to run over my tongue all day long I haven't we only got to ride once so far this year so but uh, oh so geez. I'll go out and race and then uh, between motos I'll go take some some video and and do some photos and have some fun with the kids and and just try to show what we love what's going on at the races what you know what i mean show people why motocross is just cool and fun and and uh not try to worry about the money side of things or getting free this just go out and enjoy riding your bike and that's oh, sort yeah. of what guaranteed mx is all about just trying to show how enjoyable and how much fun you can have being a part of this sport yeah that's that's pretty much our philosophy too that's what we came up with the the tagline motocross counterculture we're kind of this culture within a culture of people oh, we, God, we yeah. love the sport we kind of live we kind of live for it uh, sometimes the site takes a little bit of a back burner to us having fun and riding and I, I bet the same has happened to you we're like you know I'm having a good day on the bike I'm just gonna focus on that you know oh yeah <laughs> try to get try to get some you know coverage of the kids and stuff like that you know uh, you know and that's where I'm trying to get a little bit better too it's like I gotta get better about multitasking and you, working with you uh, doing the photo reports and stuff in the past and doing tweets for the mag and all that stuff it's like it really put me in the position of like, all right, I got to keep up with the tweets. I got to get some shots out at the same time, you know, trying to carry that forward this year, learning from what, what we did uh, in the past and working for that going on to the Loretta, Loretta Lynn qualifiers coming up for us, you know, trying to keep those tweets going, keep the, keep, you know, the faces going, you know, get some coverage of the, the young riders that yeah. may just have this little bit of an edge, but they're not like up front. It's like, you know, this kid's got it. I can tell by his form. He's, he may not be very fast now, but you can kind of see, it's like, oh, this guy's got it. He's got the natural talent. He just needs to be, you know, honed a little bit and try to get them connected with the right people that can actually hone them. It's not me. I, I, I can't coach a rider to save my life. But well, you look at, I, at one of your uh, one of your guys, I believe, uh, yeah, you're Minnesota, right? Correct. Yeah, so Dungey, you know, never really had a big amateur career. Got that, yep. got that uh, you know, did really kind of good sort of in that last B class year in 2006, and then DeCoster gives him a shot, and now guy's one of the best ever kind of thing, you know, so... Oh yeah. It ne ne doesn't necessarily have to win on the 50 class or the 60 class, but you can show that sort of passion, motivation, and, and just kind of enjoy it. And then, you know, you maybe get lucky enough to get that call and get that shot, and it all works out. I mean, look at uh, what we heard today: uh, Weston Pike riding for oh, RCH. Yeah. Eh? That's pretty sick. That is awesome. Yeah, and it's it's cool too. You're mentioning Dungey. You know, you basically introduced me to Cole Thompson and. and Knowing both of them, uh, not I don't know Thompson as well, but I've known Dungey since he was on 85s, right. and actually been on the track with him and his brother Jade, and uh, recently Blake. But I see a lot of this, the personalities between Cole Thompson and Ryan Dungey are very similar. When you talk to them, they're they're, they're kind of got this hidden shyness about them, but they're also very approachable. You know, I, I see, I, I just love how far Cole has gotten, and it sounds like he's got a good uh, good thing signed up for this summer, racing outdoors up there, and is going to try. Uh, 
very much plan on uh, doing Supercross again next year. It was really cool to see him on the 350 and just out there with the big guys, you know, yeah, doing just fun. fine, holding his own. So. Yeah, no, the kid's, uh, the kid's got some talent for sure, and he's come a long way as far as the personality and media-wise. I remember interviewing him when he was younger in the 80s and stuff. He was very very shy, like you said, and he's come a long way. And, and now when you talk to him on the mic, he's exciting, and you, you actually you, oh, you, yeah. get a good, you get a good sense out of him. And you're like, hey, I like this kid. You know, I don't, I don't just like him because he's fast, but I like his personality now, and he's he's good on uh, social networking. He shares cool pictures and has fun and, and all that kind of yep. stuff. And uh Hopefully, uh, he just got hurt actually there last weekend. Yeah, he did. I, I, I talked to his brother, and uh, they just had an MRI. They're kind of waiting on the results, and they're just kind of hoping for good news. It, it's still really swollen and big, but uh, yeah, fingers are crossed because, uh, yeah, we're only about 50 days out from our first round of Canadian Nationals. So, right. uh, not a lot of time, but uh, hopefully, he's healed because he's a big, big part of our series because the we are getting an American onslaught this summer of guys coming oh, yeah. out trying to take yep. our money. So trying to take all our loonies and toonies home. So uh, well, that's, he, he's, that's a, he's important to have, and hopefully he gets healed up. One topic I did want to touch on is, you know, you've mentioned on your, your previous blogs uh, and your current site, you know, the competitiveness of Canadian riders, you know, like you said, there's an influx of American riders coming up there. Why? What? What is your feelings on why aren't more Canadian riders, you know, coming to the U.S. and taking on, uh, you know, the riders here in Supercross, outdoor motocross? I think the riders are at the same level. I think it's just—is it a confidence thing or is it—is it expensive? Oh, it's hundred percent. It's a hundred percent a confidence thing. It has nothing to do with anything else uh, whatsoever. Because uh, lucky enough, and um, you know, in the states, you guys got to do this that road to Carmichael thing. You have to earn points. Right. Now. It's not. It's not easy for us in Canada. Literally, all you got to do is pay. You go and buy. Just pay a, and sign uh, up. Yeah, you pay and sign up. You got to get a certain license. You got to go through um, the head trauma thing now and get your get like a doctor's deal and, oh, really? and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you got to like sign these. For, I think I believe the the states has to do that as well. Um, it's something for the uh, the asterisk stuff just to make sure that you're you know safe and covered and all that oh, okay. kind of stuff and and whatnot. But it's really easy. Um, Davey Fraser actually did it in Toronto. And I talked to him about it. He goes, "Yo, man, it was it was pretty simple. You know, there's a few little hurdles and you know some paperwork you got to sign up, but." To do it, it is a lot simpler than what the Canadian uh, kids do. But the problem is, is that when we see, uh, we, we're still a country that looks at America like everything is amazing, it's the best, we, there's no way we compete, they're so big, they're so powerful, they're, they're so this. Um, ah. And then they, you know, they look and they, these guys see that they think that they need to have the same bike as, as uh, Ryan Villapoto or Ryan Dungey to, to compete. They can't just go down on you know uh, with a pipe. Are oh, you talking about full factory, factory bikes? Yeah, they just they they they're scared whether or not or, or they have practice or whatever it is. And I'll go back to Davey Fraser. The kid didn't even ride for a Supercross track or rode for three weeks before Toronto, and uh, went out there and just gave her like it. It literally takes a big set of nuts, a little bit of a pocketbook, and just kind of go for it. There really isn't right. anything else. Like these Canadian kids, they need to kind of. Let the let the scared or the nervousness or the the power of what they see on TV or what possibly could be let that get out of the way. They're just another guy on a dirt bike. Go out and give it a shot. That really it all it is. And there's only certain guys that have done it. You know, Tyler Medalia, Jeremy Medalia, Davey Frazier done it. Um, uh, old school guys like the JSRs and and Doug Demons, right. Blair Morgan, Marco Dubé, myself, Chris Pomeroy have all just lined up. It was a little easier back back in the day. But um, I actually have a So what's involved? Are you, I mean, as a Canadian, do you have to go through the same steps as as we do? Or if you're a pro card carrying person in Canada, can you just enter a Supercross race down here? Is oh, it, yeah. Is, you, is it, you need a, a letter from the CMA, which is the okay. uh, sanctioning body that is recognized by FIM in Canada. Um, it's kind okay. of, That's kind of a silly thing that kind of goes on. That's a whole other topic. But anyway, you get a letter. <laughs> you get a letter. They, they, they say that you're okay. And, and then next thing you know, you just got to go through the tests and all the information on the, uh, the uh, Supercross Pro website or the AMA Pro website. You fill out okay. the information. You pay your money. It literally costs about 800, 800 and something dollars, just a little over 800 bucks before you can cut a lap. So it's a bit pricey, but uh, it's one of those things that you need to knock off your bucket list man like if you're right. if you're a pro racer in canada you don't mind doing big jumps you're not intimidated you can handle a little bit of pressure sign up man get off the pot and and uh, just right. give, give it a shot kind of thing you know what i mean that's, <laughs> that's basically what it comes down to matt it just these kids 
are a little bit tentative and a little bit nervous and they just they just don't need to be they need to believe in their talent and their ability and and just sort of give it a shot and if it doesn't work out hey you know it doesn't work out Nikki Beatty perfect example went down there didn't make only or maybe made one night show but just he made, made Minneapolis for yeah, sure made Minneapolis and I think and, you know, Texas yeah he gave it a shot it cost a bunch of money I actually have his his budget that he gave me it cost a bunch of money and stuff like that but he's got memories for a lifetime now Oh yeah, great stories. Met new people, experience all that kind of stuff. That stuff you're not going to get, you know, when you're going to university, watching or, or yeah. anything like these are experiences. Like uh, you watch that latest, um, uh, the CBS uh, show with with Brian Deegan, and he's yep. and he's talking about his kid and going to school and stuff. And he goes, "Hey, school's important. All that stuff. You got to do those things." But he's like, "Man, I learned so many experiences and things that you'll never learn going to school." As I just took the chances of going racing and trying this and yep. that and. It's a chance. You're taking a chance, but you'll never know unless you take it. That's the thing. I have to agree with that. And, and you know, kind of to speak to that, too, uh, you mentioned, like, just going out to the track, uh, Northern Rider, Gavin Cadlick, uh, went to the Loretta Lens last year, never rode a Supercross track. I had him on a video for the last Supercross. He went to uh, St. Louis, or was it Detroit? He went to Detroit. First ever time on a real Supercross track. First lap hits the finish line double. Second lap hits the biggest triple there. I mean... <laughs> I mean the people that, that do the sports, do the outdoor motocross, have the confidence to hit the big jumps outdoors, if you can kind of get over the fear factor of the doubles. You know, I have, I've, I've done a couple of the Supercross levels, like little tracks on Heath Voss's track. It's, it is intimidating. I can, speak from, uh, I can speak from experience. Those tracks are really intimidating, just hitting a small double. But, uh, you know, if you've got the talent, you know, way more talent than I have, like Gavin and, and the people you mentioned, it's definitely possible, and I think it would be beneficial for you know more people to kind of step up and definitely give it a shot. You know, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, it's like that. It's just that simple thing of the guys. They don't need to have five thousand dollar suspension or eight kit suspension or a <laughs> wicked pipe or brand new gear. Let's like give it a shot. See if you can do right. it. And, and if you if you can, if you make it through, then it's amazing. You know, if you go out and you you break a bone, well, you could have done that at your local pit practicing too. Oh yeah. Thing, you know, so it's just local it's fair just going to take a. It's just got to take a few Canadians to kind of get that ball rolling and just say, you know what, I'm going for it. Let's sign it up. And we obviously would love the best ones, like our Colton Fasciotis, Tyler Medallia, <laughs> Jeremy Medallia. As soon as those guys take the risks, then you're going to see more guys want to do it as well. So, it, uh, I, Although I think you're going to see in the next two to three years a real good fluctuation of Canadians taking more risks down there. we got a really good young crop of talent. Uh, Dylan Wright, Weston Rosina, Jess Pettis are these three young kids that have kind of done some American races. They do Loretta Lynn's. They, they've seen the pressures and the big money and yep. the big rigs and stuff. So I believe that you're going to see a few more guys in the next two or three years start giving it more of a shot. And uh, that's only going to start igniting the fire under other Canadians, and you'll see more hopefully taking that shot as well. And, and you know, look at Darcy Lange, man. He was born and racing in the shittiest, smallest barns in B.C. He's an arena cross champion and nearly – came close to winning a 2007 Supercross champion so it can be yep. done in, it can be done in Canada you don't need to have an awesome Supercross track and all that kind of stuff you can be born and bred on some pile of nothing in a farm I mean he came from nowhere in the middle of, a, of the island in Vancouver and uh, in Courtney BC man and he became one of the most well respected and most well-rounded racers in uh, the history of Canada and the US so it can be done it just got to take that chance I, th I, I totally agree with you there <clears throat> not, not to segue into something different, uh, great topic. We could probably talk for hours oh, yeah. on that. We could go forever here for sure. <laughs> uh, you have uh, something else you wanted to bring up. You are a part of a pretty big endeavor to uh, get some of your riders to go uh, to, death, to motocross the nations. And uh, what has that been like so far? And what can you tell us about the, the team and uh, who's on it and, and all of that? Well, um, uh, November, uh, maybe October, November, I talked to uh, the manager who was doing it before. His name's Carl Bastido. He's done it for 30-plus oh, years. He's been around for a really long, long time. And he's, just, he's getting older, and he's kind of out of it, and I just kind of offered my services. I got a really good following inside the industry. And uh, back yep. to the CMA thing, so CMA is the only thing that is recognized by the FIM, which is basically like the world court. So when there's like a world court, and they have a representative from each country. CMA is what represents Canada. But in Canada, CMA is very, very small now um, in the scene. It's the CMRC that has kind of taken over motocross. Taken and over. Up, yeah, really grown the sport and got it up and running. But uh, the CMA and the FIM have been linked together for over 50 years. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a, you know, a boys club sort of thing going on there. So it's a bit of a hoop 
to jump through, but uh, I'm I'm dealing with them and, and talking with those guys over at uh, at CMA and 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 trying to get the program going. So I've already got a great thing going. I got tons of great sponsors on board. Uh, I got to raise about thirty five thousand dollars to make it happen. The the trip this year is to uh, Kegums, Latvia, which is yep. <laughs> you know I wish it could have been a li- I wish it could have been California or something to make it a little right. bit easier. But we're going to Latvia this year. Last year we went to Germany. The team we had one of our best teams, but the results were just absolute shit. Cole and Jeremy had did not live up to standards and had a bit of a rough day. Jeremy got hurt and Cole had a bit of a bug going on and, and Tyler uh, just the results weren't there, so it looked bad on us once again. Because stepping back, we got some good riders up here. We definitely belong oh, yeah. on the world stage. So um, as of right now, there's no riders picked. Um, you know, you're only allowed to allowed three. Our crop up here is very small. The guys on the list are definitely Colton Fasciotti, Cole Thompson, Kevin Benoit, Jeremy Medallia, Tyler Medallia, Sean Moffenbeier, and Kyle Keast are uh, okay. my guys right now. But I'm not going to name the team or pick anybody till August 1st. Sure. So we get some nationals under our belt, and obviously see who's going to, you know, obviously who's healthy as well, and who's going to make it in, in September. What is the even the dirt or conditions like in Latvia? Can you compare it to something like one of your tracks? Is it, Actually, you know, is it I'll, somewhere I'll compare, like Gopher Dunes? Or? I'll compare it to one of your tracks. It's almost identical to Millville. Really? Right. Yeah, it's the same kind of dirt. It's like sandy, nice loam with a little bit of hard pack. So if it gets super hot, it'll become hard pack. But if they get water to it, it'll be a nice burned up loam. Really fun looking layout. I, I've uh, I've Googled it a couple times. They've, they had a, um, a GP there last year. And uh, it's a, fun, a really fun looking course. And... Uh, it's 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 got a nice a good canadian feel to it where a lot of our tracks up here other than west coast are very uh uh soft and and more sandy terrain so uh our our guys will definitely like the track if everything works out and according to plan and we go and to be honest with you matt the only reason that this plan is not going to work is if the canadian people and i'm not talking industry i'm not talking sponsors i'm talking the canadian people don't support it because that's how i'm trying to raise the money because uh, sponsors, there's, it's very hard to find a return on their Lucrative, investment. Yeah. And the other problem is, is that um, you know, uh, if Fox Canada wants to sponsor it, and I pick Colton Fasciotti, he's wearing Trolley Designs gear, and and you know, Monster wants to sponsor it, but you know, Red Bull, they got a, I got Tyler Medallia who wears a Red Bull helmet, so it, right. I'm really you got reach, Rockstar with Thompson. And yeah, I'm reaching out to, I'm reaching out to the people to do this, and there's more than thirty five thousand people that like motocross in Canada, so that's a buck out of each of them, and. Uh, that's the kind of how I'm looking at it, and, and down the road, if people want to invest in the idea, then that can work out. But this year, I really wanted to be supported by the people. That way, they show that the that they love the sport, they want to pride in their team, and and they can make it work. So uh, that's that's you've been my crowdsourcing goal. for sure on the on the website uh, and your tweets on both your personal account and with Guaranteeds. Uh, we'll we'll put the URL up at the bottom, but this is basically open to anyone to contribute. So even you know people in the states, if they want to oh, make yeah, sure that there's a good. Got- 100%. Uh, Steve Mathis over at Paul Vimex, he's a Canadian. He, he pumped it through a couple things. Uh, it, it's grown up a little bit so far. Uh, I've raised about 800 bucks so far on that link. And, uh, I mean, hopefully it's going to go bigger. I got an event that I'm going to uh, next weekend in Easter on the east coast of Canada for the Josh Damry Arena Cross Race. I'm going to do a silent auction out there. I've got uh, a Ricky Carmichael signed jersey that he donated. Um, nice. uh, James Stewart signed poster. Tyler Medalli is donating a helmet. So we're going to try to raise some money there. I've got a golf tournament planned uh, in the middle of the summer to try to raise money. I've got some motocross schools, and I'm going to be busy, man, and, and uh, I'm going to work my ass off to make it happen. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, and, but uh, I'll tell you, there's, it's not going to be lack of effort, that's for sure. Well, hopefully, I wish the best with all that because I think it would be definitely beneficial for the entire sport to have representation from as many countries as possible. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. we got to be there, man. We got to. It's the biggest thing in the world. It's the biggest race in the world. we we got to be a part of it. Oh, definitely. It, it's definitely more. Uh, it's more that people give it credit. To you. I mean, there's a lot of people that kind of drop off once the Monster Energy Supercross is, is off season, or you know, the Outdoor Nationals through MX Sports. And those are the poser those fans. Just... Those are the, the poser <laughs> fans. You're not a passionate think... fan because passionate fans like motocross over supercross. Oh yeah, and they're watching year round. I mean, uh, my my mechanic Tom Gregg, uh, he watches. He's always watching the European motocross championships. He's watching your motocross championships. He's watching the U.S. He can't get enough of it. I mean, he oh, lives yeah. for it. He's he's wrenching on bikes year round, watching you know down T mode or whatever online videos. I, I don't think I've ever been in a shop when he doesn't have some video playing. Like, yep. where are we <laughs> racing? But yeah, this is a South African race. Uh, really? <laughs> it's it's always a good time, but. 
yeah, they're, they're they're definitely it's a global <laughs> it's a global sport, man. You know what I mean? Everybody once you get a hold of it, you love to watch no matter what. I actually bought the uh, the GP package there so I can watch all the races and the and the MX of Nation I, on live. I bought them all. I'm like, ah, forget it. I just I enjoy it as well. I've watched the Brazil. Oh, yeah. and the, I've watched Brazil, Qatar, and um, I can't remember where the last one now was, but uh, yeah, I've, I've watched them all. And I'm just yeah, just like your mechanic, man. I just I'll watch any any motocross anywhere. <laughs> well, it's, it's neat, too, because it, it teaches you how universal the sport is. I mean, the riding format, the riding style is pretty pretty much the same. I mean, you, you, I mean, once you put the gear and helmet on, it doesn't really matter what country they're from. They're doing the same thing, and they're they're having a blast. Yeah. I mean, that's what the sport's all about. So, what is there anything else you wanted to bring up? I mean, we, we're going to be uh, putting on the lower third throughout the show. You've already seen it if you're watching. Uh your Twitter and uh, Instagram account information. Anything else you want to plug while we had you on the show here for uh, I want to I want to plug uh, yourself actually, Matt. I, you're one of those guys like me that uh, you know it's hard to get paid for what we're doing and all that kind of stuff like that. But what the hell's wrong with us? Why do we like doing this so much, man? Why? What, I don't know. Are we just idiots? <laughs> are we idiots? <laughs> you know, for me, it's you know if you can get one or two of those type of things, we got. Did a video last year with uh, Jerry Robin. It went viral thanks to the help of some people here that tweeted the hell out of it everywhere. You know, got over a hundred thousand views on it. He got picked up by uh, Geico, given some bikes, and yeah. now he was doing, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. You know, if if you can do something like that, it, it's something for me. It's more than the money. It's just you feel good. You feel like you help someone that, you know, his his parents still drive around in old cars. They still help out the local tracks. I mean, it. It just reminds you it's a family sport. I don't have any siblings, but I do within the sport, and that's why I love doing this because it it feels like I've got a wider family. I've met some great people like yourself uh, and lots of people in our region here that just kind of keep me motivated and just I want to keep trying trying to do better to to help the sport. And well, I, I'm kind of with you. It's like five to that man. That's uh, it, hard to find people like yourself and myself that just enjoy it and love doing it and. You know, worry about the worry about the the payments and all that stuff kind of later. I mean, obviously everybody wants to be rich and 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 you know make millions and whatnot. But uh, whatever, man, I, it's the sport. I freaking just steals every freaking minute of me. My my, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend. We just had a baby here, and she's like, yeah, "Congratulations on that!" I was gonna mention that. Oh. What, what did what did you end up naming? Uh, Jake. Jake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's been awesome so far. We're actually three weeks today, and uh, she's like, "You're always on your phone." I'm like, "Well." Social networking, honey. This is what I got to do. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep things busy and keep things moving and stuff like that. So it, uh, it. So what is the first, what is the first savings account for college or is it for the first MX bike? Come on, be serious. <laughs> if you talk to my mom, it's for college. If you talk to me, it's for whatever the hell he wants to do with it. Because I never, <laughs> I never went to college or anything like that and, and stuff. And uh, and uh, my parents are like, you know, let me sort of choose my path, and I chose motocross. And it's funny, they they get pissed at it now that I chose that because they're like. What the hell? You should. You could have done this. You could have done that, and da da da. And, and uh, you know, my mom is. Uh, they're very career-driven uh, people, so they all. You know, this is always sort of hit and miss. Everything you do in moto, it's up and it's down and, and whatnot. Right. But uh, you know, I've, I've as of right now, I you know, I'll, he'll, I'll let him do whatever he wants. If he wants to ride a dirt bike, awesome. If he wants to play hockey, he, awesome. You know, but he's gonna be raised like the typical Canadian boy. He's definitely gonna learn how to play hockey. He's definitely going to play all, all kinds of sports. If he likes the dirt bike, I'm going to get him a dirt bike and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then sort of let whatever he uh, wants to do kind of thing. I'm not – never been one to really pressure. My dad was never a pressure guy. So just right. if he wants to do this, awesome. If he wants to play baseball, awesome. If he'd like to play golf, even better because he can make a lot of money playing golf. <laughs> so uh, whatever Well, that's the thing, too, is pressure, pressure can make, make fake, fake people, people, too. too. I mean, yeah, I've seen people exactly. get pressured into things they don't necessarily want to live or do for the rest of their lives. And – you know, all you know. I've know people now that I went to, to high school with that are working on their first career change because they were pushed by their parents to do something they weren't really interested in, and you know they're not happy with their lives and where they're at right now. And obviously, there's other examples of that too. That, <laughs> yep. but yeah, I, I definitely congratulate you for for that thought uh, process. Thank you very and much. I appreciate that. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Just by immersion, you don't even put pressure on. I'm pretty sure he's going to have MX in his blood in some way. Maybe it'll be the media side. Maybe you know, just have a pit bike to rip around the yard and make mom scream at him. But you, well, I hope, <laughs> you never know. So I definitely hope he uh, gets my personality because I definitely pride myself on not ever being worried about getting into a situation or dealing with it. I'd rather just talk it out, communicate. I hate being like right. all, all muty and quiet and like you know high schooly drama and you know a five phone call later kind of bullshit. Just talk yep. about it, communicate it, fix it, and then move on and make it work. That's one thing I'm definitely gonna uh, show to, or hopefully he'll jump on board with that and not be shy. And, 
It always helps with the ladies too, you know, you got to be confident with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you, you have to be, I, I, that's one thing I definitely appreciate, like the skill that I'm trying to work on is I need to work on just getting a little bit more of how you end up being brutally direct and straight to the point, you know, I, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm trying to get better with that with, you know, I don't like this. Why, why am I doing this, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. But for sure. sure. So, no, things are good, man. I appreciate you giving the uh, giving the thanks on that. I'm super happy and, and couldn't be uh, couldn't be more stoked to be a dad. Well, for sure. Well, what uh, just want to tell our, our listeners, you know, I've got the Black Pass. It's not as uh, regular as it should be. It's I should call it the irregular pod or broadcast or, or blog on my site. But uh, Ryan's got the... Uh, the chug that he goes on every morning, it's kind of like a carryover of his uh, Monday Maniac he used to do uh, on MXP. Always a good read. Uh, definitely kind of touches on a lot of different things in the sport. Uh, what's going on in Canada, what's going on in the U.S., what's going on worldwide, what's going on with his family. It's it's a good read for sure. I mean, if you're into the sport, I've, I've plugged his stuff in the past. Definitely check his sites out. Uh, add it to your daily bookmarks. You know, I think we have too much... You know, I don't want to speak ill of any other media. But I think we have too much reliance on some of the, like, the big medias. I won't name names because I don't want to get shunned by them. But try to add some diver- diversify your collection of motocross media, like we were talking about before. It's a national, or sorry, it's an international sport. Definitely check out Ryan's work. Uh, hopefully, you're going to stick with uh, with Hardline once you do, because he's got stuff just he just knocks it out of the park. <laughs> Always a fan, man, and uh, appreciate your time with us and. Uh, Anything we can do to help you out down the road, if you ever want to cover anything in the in the states here in the Upper Midwest, you know, we'll we'll definitely try to spotlight the Canadian guys when they come down here for uh, qualifiers and stuff. For yeah, sure, I, so. I appreciate it, Matt, and the the time is no uh, no skin off my back for sure. I love chatting about racing and 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 seeing guys like yourself. We cut we cut from the same uh, the same cloth. We love the sport, <laughs> promote the sport, and uh, it's great. I, we could talk about moto all day long, but I don't think our cameras will go on long enough. <laughs> no, mine's been shutting off. It's, it doesn't like having uh yeah, it's going to do it again. <laughs> it's going to be a countdown. <laughs> well, I'm going to let that camera do its little thing and shut off. And uh, definitely appreciate your time, Ryan, and uh, all the best uh, to you and your family. Right on. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank, Thank you, man. man.